Hello and welcome to day two of RTTV, your special webcast produced in association with Chevron Global Lubricants, coming live from the NEC CV show. I'm Brian Weatherly and I'm joined by commercial motor editor Andy Salter. And of course this show is not just about business or about new products, it's also about entertainment. And what better way to entertain the crown than this truck behind us, the king of bling, this, this special bonneted Scania. So Andy, what about this? Whatever floats your boat, Brian, but this doesn't do it for me. I much prefer just a simple, straightforward paint job. It's a cracking looking truck, I'm, you know, I'm, not, I'm not saying anything different, but it just doesn't float my boat. Well, it certainly works for me, and I'll say why. Coles & Son used this truck for seven weeks in a special road show in Spain, and it earns them good money. So if anybody says that custom trucks and custom painted trucks don't attract business and don't make contacts, then they're not saying the real story. But we're going to catch up with all the stories from the show, and we'll be speaking to you towards the end and wind up as to what's happening in day two. Okay, Andy? Yeah, cheers, Brian. I'll see you later on. Last year, RTTV was busy singing the praises of the new Ford Transit. But 12 months is a long time in transport, and while last year Ford once again stamped its authority on the market at three and a half tons, with its mighty tranny taking a massive 37%, below that weight it suffered a slight hiccup, under undeniable pressure from the likes of VW, Vauxhall and Renault. So what's Ford going to be doing in 2007 to ensure it delivers a powerhouse performance across all its market sectors? To answer that question, I'm joined by Steve Kimber, Ford's LCV boss. Steve. Thank you. Yeah, 2006 was a pretty good year for us, and we need to build on that. We grew both volume and share right across the commercial vehicle industry, which is a tremendous achievement for us in what is a very mature market. Um, at the stand today, we see the launch of the new 4.6-ton transit, which, of course, takes our payload even higher. And to go along with that, we're also introducing a brand-new powertrain, the five-cylinder diesel engine, 200 PS, which is going to be a fabulous load-lugging engine. Looking beyond transit, we've got the pickup, uh, the pickup market with Ranger, and we're introducing a new derivative, the Ranger Wild Track. And we're also doing some powertrain upgrades with Ranger as well, with a new 3-litre diesel automatic transmission. And of course, finally, I mustn't forget the vehicle that's revolving behind us, the Transit Sport Van. It's, it's about style, it's about individuality, and it's about bringing even more passion to Ford's commercial vehicle range. And of course, it, enjoy, it joins the Fiesta Sport Van, which we launched at the beginning of this year. You may well be running a truck like this, the DAF LF hybrid in 10 years time but right now the diesel engine is still king and manufacturers are already talking about 2012 and Euro 6 by that time all new vehicles all new heavy trucks will be fitted with a diesel particulate trap so what's that going to do for operators and in particular for engine lubricants to answer that question I'm joined by Dave Spence of Chevron Global Lubricants it's a very good question Brian over the last number of years with Euro 4, Euro 5 and the oncoming Euro 6 the pressures have changed in terms of the lubricants manufacturers. There's now going to be a need for low SAPS products to meet the requirements of Euro 6. I think the market thinks that they're going to need synthetic oils to meet that um, specification, but that's not the case. The, uh, the specification can be met by Group 2 base oils, which haven't been seen widely in Europe before, but are going to be appearing on the market in late 2007. Those products are not going to be at the high cost that you know, people have seen in fully synthetic oils in the past and you're going to be able to get a very good uh, low SAPS engine oil at a price that will be more expensive than conventional mineral oils but not at the very high cost that maybe some operators are expecting. That's good news for the operator, you know Chevron is trying to deliver solutions for operators that's going to help them run their business efficiently but obviously the emissions regulations have to be met. The road transport industry has never had the best reputation when it comes to environmental issues, let's face it. However, walking the halls of the show uh, around here today in Birmingham, I'm noticing that operators really are picking up on the green themes. I'm joined here now by John Baker, he's the Sales and Marketing Director of Daimler Chrysler's Truck Operations in the UK. John, am I right in thinking, I'm not, I'm not dreaming this, am I, that operators really are picking up on things and there's no open-toed sandals and uh, lentil soup in... And I, I, I agree, there's, uh, there's definitely an increase in the awareness of environmental issues. But let me make one point. If you look at the congestion in the UK, there are about 25 million cars on the roads in the UK. There's about 400,000 trucks, and only of those, 100,000 are what we consider to be so-called juggernauts. So if you look at congestion and pollution, you've got to get it into perspective, what is causing that? Is it the motor car or is it the truck? Yeah, yeah, but yeah. to answer specifically your question, um, if you look at the environmental credentials of Daimler Chrysler or Mercedes-Benz, we certainly have introduced uh, very low emission engines, Euro 5 engines, two to three years before it was mandated by, by law. Um, we've also got engines that will run on biodiesel. 
So we have put a lot of investment into improving our um, credentials, improving our fuel performance and decreasing our emissions. Sure, and this isn't just something that's coming down from above. The market does appear to be waking up to that, to, to those... Now, as I said, the, the, the awareness of environmental issues has grown incredibly over the last six, 12 months. So we're getting a lot of requests from operators to look at alternative fuels, to look at ways that they can de or decrease their um, carbon footprint. So it's not just the flavour of the day, it's something that is, is, is growing every day. With more and more local authorities and metropolitan regions demanding low and even zero emission delivery areas, how are operators going to get in there to drop off the goods? It's going to be very difficult. Well, Smith Electric Vehicles, part of the Tanfield Group, think they've got the answer by doing electric vehicle conversions, but on conventional 7.5 tonne and even 3.5 tonne panel vans. And to tell me all about it, I'm joined by Kevin Harkin. Kevin. Hi. I think a lot of people have a preconceived idea that we still make vehicles such as milk floats with very low speed and low payload capabilities but now what we've done is together with some large companies like Sainsbury's, Marks and Spencer's, DHL and TNT we've developed machines which can give very very similar performance and payload characteristics to conventional vehicles but obviously producing no emissions whatsoever. All major companies now want to be associated with clean environmental issues and we're in a position to provide that now. Smith Electric Vehicles have launched a new electric light commercial based upon the full transit, only they call theirs the Edison. Available on a 3.5 tonne chassis cab or in a panel van, it offers a 50 mile an hour top speed and 150 mile range between charges and can carry 1400 kilograms. You're watching Road Transport TV in association with Chevron Global Lubricants. It's been all changed at Iveco recently, a new MD and a new powerful product line in the heavy truck lineup. But is this going to happen and be a false dawn for Iveco again, or can it really deliver in the tractive unit sector? To tell me about that, the new MD, Henk van Leuven. Henk, can you deliver in the heavy tractor market? Yes, absolutely. We're going to deliver in the heavy truck market. Today, uh, heavy trucks has been, for us, more or less opportunity business. We live very well from Delhi and Eurocargo, so does the network. That's okay. So that's a sound foundation to build the rest of the business. And today we are running at 6% market share, and my ambition is to come to 15% by 2011. That's quite an ambition. That's yeah. serious an ambition. Now, now what's, the, what's going to be the planks of that? What kind of business customers are you looking for in the tractor market? Well, in fact, all the customers for me are fine. I have no uh, special preference, nor do I walk away from some kind of customers. For, all, for me, they're all, they're all okay. The big driver is it, working together with a motivated network, working with a sales force who is willing and capable of selling into the, what I call the three sales channels, like retail business, the regional fleets, and the big national and international fleets. And like this, I think we can do it. Now, can you persuade drivers, finally, that this truck is as sexy as maybe a Scania or a Volvo? Well, the, the proof is in eating the, the, the pudding, as they say in UK, I understand, right? So people have to be behind the wheel. Test the vehicle, and then I'm convinced of it. It will, it will, it will change their mindset, and they will start appreciating this truck. Okay, Hank Van Leuven, thank you. Thank you, you're welcome. Having tied up a new global sponsorship deal with the mighty All Blacks rugby team, Iveco's clearly hoping that the Kiwis' winning ways and above all else its strong team spirit will rub off on the organisation and in particular on its new Stralis tractor range. There's been a massive explosion in van use in the UK over the last five years. It's down to home shopping, eBay, Tesco's, wherever you love people are internet shopping and expecting, expecting those deliveries brought to their front door. The van has been the main beneficiary of this market, food. It's a bonanza, so let's find out more about it. I've got Steve Bridge, the Sales and Marketing Director for Mercedes-Benz Vans uh, with me now. Steve, I've just been talking about the whole boom in the light um, commercial vehicle sector, in panel vans in particular, around the internet shopping dot-com boom. What's your feeling about this? Is this going to go on and on forever, or has it got a short lifetime? Go What's the Mercedes-Benz It's uh, a very good question, Andy. I think um, the answer to it is that it would go on for quite a cons considerable right. period from here on in. Um, we've noticed a huge increase in Sprinter van sales, more and more people um, purchasing the products off the internet, for example. Of course, it needs delivering to their homes. So from the courier perspective, Sprinter sells itself into or, or lends itself quite well into that area. Also, .com, uh, in terms of home shopping, 
um, chassis cabs. So ah, okay, so this isn't just a panel van boom, no, no. this is covering the whole thing. We, we, we um, have experienced a huge increase in chassis cab sales as a result of supermarket um, deliveries being to people's doors now rather than uh, the shop having to go to the store. So Tesco, Ocado, Sainsbury, Asda have all taken Sprinter as their vehicle. That's a fairly jobs. blue chip line of customers. It then, is, yeah, we're very proud of that portfolio, I have to say. I've come onto the MAN stand to meet with sales and marketing director Dave Cousins. Dave, a very green stand for you. Now, the talk of the show is that you had a cracking year last year and that the simplicity of the EGR message is getting over. But what we're really interested in are the trucks in the future, the courtesy of MAN's Dutch division. We've seen pictures of the brand new range. Now, when will we see those in the UK? Oh, good morning, Brian. Thank you for that. Actually, um, we're in full flow here, as you say. We had a massive year last year. Uh, we've taken record order intake um, with our trucks in the first quarter this year. And it's ironic for me that we're showing the technology generation in all its glory across the range for the first time here at the show. And we're already talking about a new generation of vehicles. Uh, those vehicles will be with us, but not until the quarter two uh, era of next year. So right. it's TGA business as usual. Well, you can expect any journalist to always ask you for what you haven't got. So tell us, tell us what we will see when the new models arrive. Well, what you'll see is a continuation of our EGR uh, technology. State-of-the-art driveline in the TGA uh, vehicle will remain. And the, the new generation is really all about the driver, the environment, safety, ergonomics, and improving the aerodynamics of the vehicle. Well, we can't wait to see them. But yep. In the meantime, we have behind us one of the uh, magnificent... Uh, MAN military vehicles, yes. the big military order you gave for the British Army. Yep. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, we're of course extremely proud of that order, which is probably the largest order placed in Europe for trucks in the last 25 years. The first deliveries happened last week, and uh, it's going to go on until 2013, over 7,000 units. But the service contract is for 20 years on each vehicle. So when the last one is delivered in 2013 and has a 20-year life cycle, after that, are you going to be looking after the residuals and used vehicle sales? Uh, in a word, Brian, no. I should be passing that on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Making its debut at the NEC was MAN's new 6x4 26330 TGM, a lightweight six-wheeler for payload-hungry operators. With an alloy tipping body, it offers close to 17 tonnes payload. It's been a turbulent past 12 months for Birmingham van maker LDV, but now, finally, the company appears to be on a firmer footing. It's now owned by Russian company Gaz, and the company's invested £50 million in developing LDV to be a van maker for the future. This new product, a minibus, and a crew cab and a chassis cab have been launched here at the CV show. Yesterday, they announced a 200-vehicle order for the new product. Production is up to 286 vehicles a week. It really is good times for the Birmingham van maker. This summer, they're predicting that they will turn to profitability. Fundamentally, just getting confidence back in the business. That the, uh, as you say, the, vo the volume now is 286 a week. It was 150, so it's almost doubled in uh, nine months. That's all built to order, and uh, the orders are coming in because people believe in the long-term future of the business. So we've got chassis cabs, minibuses, combi vehicles. More product on the way. There is more product on the way. Not. Uh, not, not to be announced yet, but uh, clearly we've got the basic product range now with the vans, the combis, the chassis cab, the buses. But uh, there's a lot of opportunity to do more around uh, powertrain, for example, and, uh, and some other features. Brian, end of day two. Uh, fantastic day, though. Really busy. Always the busiest day of the show. What's been the highlight for you here at Birmingham? To me, the most interesting things have been the electric vehicles from uh, the Tampa Group, Smith Electric Vehicles, and also Modec, and the fact that people like Sainsbury's and Tesco's are very interested in running them. It's appropriate for, for me, being here in Birmingham, that we went to LDV, uh, of course, the home of the Birmingham-based uh, van maker, and it seems like they're on a really strong footing now and set fair for great growth. So that's it from us for Road Transport Television in association with Chevron Global Lubricants for day two. Join us tomorrow for another fantastic webcast.